kind of check in with your body and yourself during that time. All right, welcome and step back to you. Thank you.
This life that we share, this life of connection, this life of love, exists beyond our bodies, beyond our minds, beyond anything we could know. It is visible and it is invisible. This life of love that we are connected to, deep in our bodies, and connected to way up there in the heavens, this life, this love, is what brings us all together and it's what keeps us going, knowing that there is a truth within us, there is a wisdom within us that knows it is the truth of us. I invite you to sit in the experience of this moment, of this prayer, of this chant, of this song, knowing that however we express our love, however we express our wisdom, however we express our life, it is our divine wisdom coming through from God. It's our divine place in this earth, no matter what it looks like. It's a safe place for keeping all the dreams inside.
difference is the way we need to be. So we, I celebrate, enjoy, whatever it is that brings us here, whatever it is that brings us to the place we are, in the way we are, in the form that we are, all beautiful, all grateful, I celebrate, and so it is. What was 
what we came to earth with it with, but also what was instilled in us as children, accidentally or intentionally, might have been either way. But we but sometimes we have a lot of ways of dealing with these beliefs and, and dealing with these um, limiting factors in our lives. <clears throat> But I don't hear us talking so much about why we suited up in the body we're in. And what does that mean for us? Is there a reason why we suited up in the actual body we're in? And I know this might sound a little unconventional, but, um, but I think it's really important. And I don't, I don't wanna talk about if you like your body or love your body or if you're friends with your body, this is, we're gonna go much deeper than that. I'd like to go beyond that because it doesn't really matter what your little self or what your ego thinks of your body. For this purpose, for what I wanna get at, that's kind of irrelevant. So in the book of the month, last month, which was Love Between Equals, we, equals and for those that don't know, we do have a book of the month and we have a community um, discussion every Tuesday, every Thursday night on Zoom, if you want to join that. But anyways, this was written by Polly Young Eisengrath, and she is a Buddhist and a well-respected psychotherapist. So she says in this book, from a Buddhist perspective, your body and its form express your own personal karma. And the teachings of rebirth instruct you to look at this current body as a manifestation of a whole stream of other embodiments. In other words, your current embodiment is the expression of many forms and many lifetimes leading up to now. You did not arrive in this current form for arbitrary reasons, but instead for reasons connected specifically to you. <coughs> The Buddhist perspective can be an invitation to investigate the larger meaning of your embodiment instead of sub simply judging your body or comparing it to others. And I agree with her, you know, because we experience life through this body. Aside from downloads we might get from spirit in meditation or prayer and contemplation, we experience life through our body. Anything we take in as information comes from one of our senses. And we all absorb or take in that information uniquely, differently. None, none of us do it the same. So um, <clears throat> if any one of these senses has a limitation, you're going to experience it differently than I do. So, you know, vision, hearing, taste, touch, smell, anything that's different about you is going to be it's different than how I experience, but also anything about your form, your embodiment, your body that's different is going to um, also experience the information differently. So there are things that only you can experience because of your combination of size, shape, color, gender, strengths, limitations, etc. No one else is gonna feel it exactly like you. And like I said earlier, some might say, God put you in this body for a reason, and you might say, God, why did you put me in this body? But um, I believe it's your higher self, your soul, wanting to do some further exploration. And what does your soul want to express as your body? What does your soul want to learn? And what does it want to share? You know, animals don't have the same attachment to their bodies as we do. The black lab doesn't really care that his snout is going gray and he's getting older and people can see that. Um, being um, a person that communicates with animals, I've had several conversations with people and their animals about um, What's the word? Amputation. You know, the vet has recommended an amputation of a leg for some reason, and people are always concerned about it. And I had one woman who 
the vet recommended an eye be removed because it was a little bit painful, but it was certainly non-functioning and it would have been easier to take care of without the eye, but she was concerned about what the dog was going to look like. And when I talk to these animals, they pretty much don't care. They know they'll adapt. They have no attachment. So as long as someone's not pitying them for not having a leg or pitying them for um, having looking a little bit different, they don't care. And so please don't pity animals <laughs> or other people. It's just like saying, every time I see you, oh, I'm sorry, you're such a failure. That just kind of brings everyone down every single time. So, um, over and over. <coughs> so we're often looking at our bodies the wrong way. And we should not be asking, why is my skin so wrinkled? How can I fix it? How can I lose this weight? Why has my hearing gone? Why is my vision, vision getting worse? Why do I have to wear glasses even though the font is getting bigger and bigger on the page? I don't <laughs> But the other thing is, what, what, um, what we should ask is, what do I have to learn from this? What can I learn from my vision loss or my hearing loss? And how does it affect my personal relationships? And, even bigger, is how can I take this out into the world and perhaps help other people with this information? So with hearing loss, for example, can I help um, a grandmother be more understanding of why her family is getting impatient with them or why to a child her grandmother seems to be ignoring her more? You know, can I help someone or do I have the knowledge to develop some other kind of hearing aid or the tools to start some kind of foundation for people that can't afford appropriate thing, you know, help for themselves. How can I take my knowledge of this information out into the world and help others? <clears throat> All right. <coughs> so, the information your body has for you, um, it's like little gold nuggets for you. You have access to this information, no one else has. God is living as you. And God can only experience life this way, as you. It can't experience it any other way. No one else can contribute information to the whole the way that you can. So tonight we're actually going to um, do a meditation, try to go a little deep and ask and find out what am I to learn from this body? We're going to see if there's something that will help me in my relationship, or help you in your relationships. If, is there something that will help your life in some way that you've never looked at before? Because we have tools for dealing with every other limitation in our life, but we never seem to, and I, I should, perhaps not all of us, but many of us never seem to look at this aspect of our life, of our manifestation, um, and what it means. So, um, there's a paper. Did um, everyone get a paper when they came in? And if not, the, there's some ushers that are handing them out. If you wanna raise your hand so they know. And while they're handing these up, oh, are they all the way outside? Yeah. <laughs> um, while these are being handed out, start thinking about yourself and how you describe your body. Not in um, judgment terms, but in real fact terms, like what color is it, what shape is it, what sex is it, what... Um, limitations do you have? What strengths do you have? You can just kind of start thinking about that so that you know as we get into the meditation um, some of the things that might you might want to question. And the meditation itself is not that long, but we're going to do some sharing afterwards, some talking afterwards as well. 
You know, even, I, I would say, um, even the color of your hair. Growing up as a redhead was not easy. And um, I never really thought about it, and why I might have red hair. I've never thought about it. I mean, the reason I've had red hair is because my dad's dad and my mom's mom. So <laughs> that's why I had red hair. But Kathy Ann actually said to me one time um, about when we were going through our actual purpose in life, um, she said, you, you weren't born with red hair for, a re for no reason, or is that how you say it? <laughs> you have red hair for a reason, that's what she said. It's like, oh, really? Hmm. So I decided to take a look at that. Okay, are we all set? So I'm going to, um, so we're going to, I'm gonna take you through a guided meditation. I'm gonna invite you to get comfortable in your chair. Not so much that you'll fall asleep, I hope, but if you do, that's fine. Um, and close your eyes if you wish. And as we start to settle in, I invite you to take three deep breaths as we begin this journey inward. And breathe in the sacred, sacred around us. And breathe out any concerns or worries that might have come in with you. Just for now, breathe those concerns and worries out for 10 minutes. And I'd like you to imagine yourself in a safe space outside. Somewhere that feels comfortable to you. Some place that is warm, perhaps safe, protected. It's your space. Make it how you want it. It might have flowers, it might have trees, grass, calm animals, anything you want. See yourself there now. And feel yourself there now. Feel being there with your sense of smell, taste, hearing, and at the same time feel your feet firmly planted on the planet, on the earth, feel your feet connected with the mother earth energy, and in this safe space outside, the sun begins to set. And you see a star, the brightest star you've ever seen. It's bright and warm and beautiful. And in fact, it seems to radiate a pinkish light. And as you look at it and just kind of revel in its warmth and love, you notice something like a tail on it, something like maybe a ribbon, something connecting the star with a channel of light down to the earth. <coughs> and this channel of light, you notice, connects with the earth just in front of you. It is warm, it is loving, it is safe, it is comfortable. It's an inviting light, pink, warm light. So you decide, you decide to walk towards the light. <coughs> and as you near it, you find yourself surrounded by this warm light all over your body. For a minute, feel the warmth of this light all over your body. And feel how it feels inside your body. Does it make your heart warm? Wherever you feel like your soul is, does it feel warm and expansive? You might notice that you feel more connected to God than ever, and to life, and to everything.
And now ask yourself, while feeling this loving light connected to, <coughs> to God and the universe, what am I learning by being in this form? What am I learning by being in this body? And you can write the answers on the paper if you want to. Make notes. What does this body, this form, have to teach me? yourself, what do the constraints or the limitations of my body have to teach me? What are the limitations or constraints teaching me of being in this form, this life? And that is all the information we're asking for tonight. So if you choose to tell the star good night, or tell God, or the universe, or yourself, thank you, and goodbye, and good night. And begin to bring, to start the process, coming back to being present in the chair where you are, back to the Center for Spiritual Living. Feel yourself in the chair, on the chair, in this time and space. And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. And I'd like you to just take a moment and check through your answers just in case you forgot what you wrote. But I'd like to um, have this be a, an experience of witnessing each other. Now, you don't need to share any more than you want, but I'd like to get into groups of two or three, and perhaps at least share if you had some kind of insight, if something came to you, if you had an experience. And I'd like each person to, you know, share for two or three minutes, and then we'll come back together as a group. So I see some people are still writing, but if you want to break into groups of just two or three, just organically, whoever finds themselves together is fine. And I will let you know when it's time um, to move on to another person.
guys all talk to each other's group? Okay. All right. So, you know, a 10-year-old girl once asked His Holiness the Dalai Lama, and I'm sorry for interrupting, I, I gave you a warning. Um, <laughs> she said, how do you know you are the Dalai Lama? Because if you don't know, the Dalai Lama is a karmic thing, um, and I'm not going to explain it very well, but it's pre like decided, like before birth, mm -hmm. who the Dalai Lama is. Anyway, so she said, how do you know you are the Dalai Lama? And His Holiness replied, how do you know you're a little girl? And um, he, I, I think he was probably signaling to the little girl that you also have a karmic destiny to express. You know, that just because you are appear to be a little girl, How do you know, and how do you feel, and, and what does that mean? Anyway, would anyone like to quickly just share an insight or an experience from this with the whole group? And if not, it's okay. <laughs> okay, great. It's a way to be in community, it's a way to have food, to have um, adventures, and to meet people. I think oftentimes <coughs> the message is great, the music is great here, and yet you could come away every single week and not make 
a one-on-one -on -one connection with somebody. Um, and there are so many loving people out here and so many great events to, to share with each other. So once a year we have Gourmets for God and it is an event that someone creates at their house or at some other person's house. Uh, we have had French dinners, we've had the best lasagna ever dinner, we've had creative cocktails by the creek, we've made pickles, um, whatever kinds of things people come up with. Um, we have a, a silent auction and you create your event and people um, bid on them. They go from May until December. Uh, we have one more week tonight and then next Sunday to be putting in ideas. There'll be a week or two and then we come back and we bid on these. Um, and they are such great fun and there are people north, south, east, west who create these. Um, and I have made some of my best connections with people through these events. So I will be at the back if anybody um, is interested, thinking about an event, um, looking at what we've done before. They're just fun. They're a fabulous way to meet people. They're usually eight to 15 people, six to four, about four to whatever. They're very fun. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. Thank you. Thank you, Practitioner Marilyn. And they are very fun. I've participated for many years. I've hosted ad nauseum, so they're very fun. So also, I'd like to point out this week is Spirit at Work, which if you want some spiritual help um, and connection with other people in your professional or business life, uh, Tuesday morning is the Better Business Breakfast. The class Beyond Limits starts uh, started last week, but you can still join. And that is the, the basics of what we believe here. It's our foundation class, so you might want to take that. Especially if you want to do sacred travel, where they are going to Peru in June and Egypt in September. So um, a lot of great opportunities coming up. I would like to call it the ushers. And as the ushers come up, um, and as people prepare any gifts they have for the community, I would just like to to know, I would like, um, and I'm, I'm telling the Facebook Live people because I don't know who's on there, if you want to text GIVE to 844-315, oh my gosh, I didn't write the whole phone number down. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess we're not doing that text to GIVE tonight, but um, yeah, 844-315-7968, that is the phone number that you can text <coughs> to donate um, your gift. So, just taking our gift and knowing in our hearts that this is, this truly is a gift to our community. It's a gift to, to help ourselves and others continue in this practice and in this process, knowing that we all benefit. If one person is helped, then we are all helped. And knowing that these gifts can be expanded many, many times by, by our actions, by just talking and, and witnessing and being with others, that the community service provided through these is so great. And I give great thanks knowing this is, and this, this is truly a gift to, from God to God, to the community, from the community, and so it is. And so it is.
any of you who might want some additional prayer, um, I will be leading a prayer circle over here afterwards. If that's, um, if you want to share any of the meditation that you came up with or anything about good or not good, well, I'll be there. Um, I just want to take a moment and thank Karen and Stefan and everybody putting on this um, this service this evening, and just ask you to sink back in to that place, that safe place that you went to not too long ago. And remember that we are all children of God. And that there is nothing that God doesn't want except our best and our greatness. And as we work to discover, look to discover that purpose of why we suited up, God is right behind it and God is helping us get there. So I want you to take, take that in. Look at that for yourself. Think about all the people you see, that that's happening for them as well, whether they know it or not. And you can see and know the greatness of that. So take that with you tonight, out into the world, out into your week, and just love everyone. Mm -hmm. And so it is. So, so it is. is. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Give me love, 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 sacred love. God gives me love, 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 sacred love, yeah, yeah. I can feel you got this love from a thousand miles. And the heavens open every time God's mind. 